High blood sugar, also known as hyperglycemia, occurs when the body has too little insulin or when the body can't use insulin properly. The goal of diabetes management is an optimal level of control for your blood sugars. However, day-to-day -day fluctuations are often unavoidable, and most people living with type 1 diabetes will find that they experience hyperglycemia or high blood sugar at varying times throughout the day. Optimal glucose control means maintaining blood sugars on average between 90 and 150 milligram per deciliter. As the blood sugar increases beyond 150, so does the risk of both acute and long-term complications. Hyperglycemia is caused by an imbalance between blood sugar levels and the amount of insulin. The primary job of insulin is to lower blood sugars. Therefore, not enough insulin or too many carbohydrates will cause high blood sugars, as will less than usual exercise or physical activity. Other factors can also contribute to hyperglycemia. Some are beyond your control and include stress, dehydration, puberty, menstruation, being in the honeymoon phase, even weather, climate, and altitude. Those many factors make it common to have occasional fluctuations in your blood sugar. The individual living with diabetes and their care team should focus on patterns of abnormal blood sugars, usually of at least three days duration. If more than three days of hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia are occurring in a pattern, changes in the insulin regimen are usually required. Hyperglycemia may or may not be recognized depending on the individual. Common signs and symptoms of high blood sugar include increased thirst, dry mouth, frequent urination, and changes in mood or behavior. Intermediate signs of prolonged hyperglycemia include blurry vision, increased hunger, and fatigue. And persistent symptoms of long-standing hyperglycemia include weight loss, fruity breath, feeling significantly tired and lethargic, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. If you experience high blood sugar, it is important to address that situation as soon as it's recognized. A high blood sugar that's not addressed may eventually lead to a serious condition known as diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA. Either way, it's a good idea to try to understand why the blood sugar may be reading high. This could help prevent future episodes of hyperglycemia. Treating a high blood sugar is important. Your diabetes care team has provided you with an insulin regimen that will account for treating hyperglycemia. DKA is a dangerous condition which could be fatal. Now, hyperglycemia does not immediately lead to DKA. There is an intermediate step known as ketosis, which if recognized and treated quickly can prevent DKA. Ketosis develops when an insulin to blood sugar level imbalance occurs. When the supply of insulin is too low and cannot help the body's cells use blood sugar for fuel, the body believes that it's starving. So, it resorts to an alternate source of fuel known as ketones, which are produced when fat is broken down. As ketone levels climb in the blood, the body becomes more acidic. Once DKA is developed, the only appropriate management is hospitalization with IV insulin. Due to the severity of DKA, it is crucial to monitor for ketones when appropriate. Ketones can easily be tested in the urine or with blood ketone meters at home. Ketones usually cause abdominal pain, nausea, or vomiting, but it's important to know that you may have ketones with no symptoms. When ketones are present, it means the body is breaking down fat for alternative fuel since it's unable to get the blood sugar into the cells. If ketones are detected, trace or small ketones are usually treatable by drinking lots of extra water. A sugary drink is not an acceptable alternative and will likely worsen the situation. Extra insulin is often required to reverse the ketones and high blood sugar. If ketones are moderate or large, contact our pediatric endocrinology team, either the diabetic nurse during the day or the pediatric endocrinologist on call nights, weekends, and holidays. Blood sugar and ketones will need to be checked every two hours until the ketones are gone and blood sugar is back to normal. Ketones should be checked for the following reasons. A blood sugar over 300 milligrams per deciliter, during times of illness or a missed insulin dose. If one is experiencing abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, or simply not feeling well, it's important to remember to check for ketones even if the blood sugar is normal or low.